Hi there. Here's a little treatment of IP tables and how I used it on my system. So let me first show you the uh, IP tables file, file I put on here. Um, I think I called it demo. Let's take a look at this file here. So this file, I, I've prefaced it with the word star filter, which means when you feed this thing into um, IP tables, it will know it's for filtering commands. The A means add. So the first thing you do is you put this um, statement in for input as you want to keep all your established connections running. In my case, I've accepted all outbound traffic as being okay, so I'm allowing anything to go out of my server. You always want to use DNS, so you have to make um, a regard to input DNS into your server, and there's the uh, port 53 accept minus j jump for accept, so input rule, chain rule for um, UDP and TCP DNS except on port 53. So I'm allowing anybody to come in now on uh, port 80 and port 443. So the way this thing works is anything you put here with input and a port, it will let any IP in. So any IPs that are trying to get into anywhere in the world will get in with these rules. And usually you do want anyone to jump in on your uh, web server, but if you're getting a de denial of service attack, you may not want to have this thing open like this. Also want to keep port 123 open for NTP. I don't care about my local interface. We'll, we'll let anything go on my local interface on uh, uh, 127.0.0.1. I was reading that only certain types of ping should be permitted, so I'm allowing ping type 8. And now you can have other ports that aren't defined up here only accessible by certain IP addresses. So in this case, I'm allowing uh, any port to come in on my local LAN. I'm allowing any port to come in on this LAN, which is usually on my uh, MacBook Pro when I'm doing a sharing. So I'm using this server for uh, VOIP connections, and so I'm letting anything come in from a uh, call centric SIP connection from their IP, anything from free call come in, uh, any port. The same with the All Star Amateur Radio Network. And then if I'm at coffee shops and I want to get into my server, you have to define that in this uh, file also. And then everything else we're going to reject it. Any other IPs that are defined here, reject. Any other forwards, any forwards period, reject. So again, for summary, um, any of these definitions up here will come in on any IP. And then any ports that are defined up here, any ports we've forgotten about, like port uh, 5090 for, for VOIP for SIP, uh, those will only come in with defined IPs down here. So I had to do this because I was getting hacked from all over the world, especially China, on my SIP server and I just didn't want to have all these people hacking uh, Aster. So I had to put the stuff in. So then how do you get these rules to come into your system? Well, you can do that. Here's some of the rules I used. Um, this command here, uh, IP tables restore. Uh, this is how you would get in your uh, IP tables, which you just defined in the file I showed. You get those in your system as as soon as you commit this rule. So if I if I would then uh, commit this rule, it will put these into your IP tables immediately, and these are uh, uh, immediately enforced. So 
that's problematic. Um, but that's how it goes. You'll, you'll be enforcing immediately. And you can test this stuff out with, um, with IP table supply. And it'll see if you really want to do those. The, the other problem I had was how do I make these rules persistent? Well, once you, once you do an IP restore, it'll take the table you defined and, and put it into IP tables. Then you can save those. So there's a uh, save command here. And here's the save command right here. So you want to save these things all out to uh, ETT network, IP tables, um, up rules. And once those rules are, are saved out there, you would like to make them persistent. So we do know that this IP restore uh, command will make the rules persistent. So the only good way I found to do this was on boot up. Uh, I put these into rc.local. Uh, what's that called? Um, uh, uh, uh. There's an RC file in here that I put the stuff in. In fact, I'll probably have to recall the command. Okay. Yeah, I did I did do something with rc.local. And I put these things into rc.local. There it is. So the only way I got this to work was I put this into rc.local at the very bottom, this command here. So when this system boots up, this could be Debian, this could be Raspberry Pi, this could be uh, Ubuntu. When this thing boots up, I then execute this, which will take the persistent rules from ETC network IP tables and put it into IP tables restore, and then your firewall becomes active immediately when your system reboots. So that's about it, and this is how to avoid uh, people hacking your SIP, your SIP system and people hacking your SSH trying to log in. So it's sort of draconian having to block all IPs, but believe me, there's a lot of hackers out there that want to cause <coughs> havoc and destruction. I was getting um, about 30 hacks a second just from one hacker in China. So this is a really great way to uh, secure your system. Well, thanks for watching and have a great day.